Thanks, Jared, and thanks everyone for joining. Um, uh, I'm talking to you from Camarillo land and the North Shore of Sydney, uh, where we have a manufacturing facility. And I think over my left shoulder, you can uh, you can see uh, one of our cool sheets. Um, let me just check. We are running. I have sitting in the wings the mastermind behind this, Tom Hull, is the founder and the CTO and the inventor of the cool sheet. So. Um, if there's any uh, prickly questions in the chat, then um, we can have them answered hopefully straight away. Um, cool sheet. What are we? What problem are we trying to fix? Well, I think no surprise to most of you uh, attending this um, webinar. Um, you know, traditional way of heating water is you know, expensive, inefficient, and unsustainable. Um, we've been passionate about. Um, creating an innovative solar thermal um, solution and manufacturing it here in Australia. Um, yeah, and it, it does two things effectively. It's a, a preheat for, for water solution uh, and offsetting fossil fuel use and then cooling solar panels, which improves their efficiency. Um, just gonna go through PV thermal, PVT, for those uh, for whom it's new to been around since about 2007, but it's picking up a pace now globally. Um, and then the, the most common use cases we can see in Australia and New Zealand, and then just a couple of points on integrating with heat pumps and, uh, and modeling considerations. Yeah, so cool sheet is a, a heat exchange panel. It's an aluminium heat exchange panel, um, and it sits on the back of a solar panel. Uh, and it's using thermal conduction effectively to capture waste heat that builds up in the silicon and the glass and the metal of a solar panel. So quite simply, um, and it gives you two, two outputs, uh, input to the hot water. Economics don't make sense yet unless you're needing some hot water. And then the cooling uh, of the solar panel, which is an excellent black product. Uh, we can make cool sheets that go into an existing PV system, which is quite interesting, particularly if you've got a one megawatt, 500 kilowatt, even a hundred kilowatt PV system on a on your own roof or a client's roof, and new build is of course a slightly more effective um, uh, installation cost. The product fits entirely within the frame of the solar panel. We can make cool sheets for a number of different sized modules. Um, the cool sheet's one of the lightest PV thermal panels on the market. The average panel size is about eight and a half kilos. Solar panel weighs about twenty three. Um, Bigger ones are heavier, but, but that's the average size. Um, what's quite neat um, with this solution, uh, the, which is patented by Tom, is um, it's extremely low maintenance, almost zero maintenance. So it's been designed to fit and forget sitting behind a solar panel for a long life, up to 25 years. And then we have a quick connect plumbing solution as well. So. Um, Really, we're trying to minimize the number of contractors on the job, safety message, but also an efficiency and a cost message. And yeah, there's a number of other benefits to having as few contractors as possible. We'll get questions. How does it actually work? I think this is a useful graph, interested in feedback. Um, of course, we all know solar panels convert sunlight into electricity. So, but actually, this is a, shows the uh, the volume or the level of energy from the sun that's falling on silicon solar cell, um, by far the bulk of it is actually creating heat. So if you can harness that heat, that's the fuel source, which is PVT. Um, and generally, rule of thumb, if you have a 500 watt solar module, depending on latitudes and inclination, all the system parameters, should be able to extract about two and a half times, maybe up to three times, uh, that figure in thermal energy, so about 1,250 watts thermal, maybe even up to 1,500, depending on system parameters. That's an interesting point just um, on the bottom right there. For every um, 10 degrees Celsius that you drop the temperature of the solar panel cell, um, you're lifting electrical efficiency 4%. So if you can drop uh, 40 degrees out of a solar panel, um, from about 80 to, to 40, which we can do, then you're lifting its electrical efficiency by 16%. And that's significant. Um, 
there's links in this presentation, uh, you'll see afterwards, um, hyperlinks to this one's to the ATVP, Jared and team, that was an excellent piece of work you did under, under the ARENA program. Um, but just a quick call out to, to say that in terms of factory process heat, uh, water source heat pumps mated to a, a waste fuel source, a free fuel, is now the cheapest form of process heat generation in the world. These numbers are a couple of years old, actually, but it's good data, and 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 they're just the delta is just getting better as price of gas goes up. Um, yeah, so I mean, three primary uses of, of PVT, certainly at a commercial industrial level, residential, we we'll, you know we can have a separate conversation about that, but um, direct heating for a swimming pool needs a lower temperature output. It's being used quite a lot around the world in key pockets around the world for as part of the, the hot water solution in hotels and resorts. And we're talking to you today about what we think is really going to be quite a driver around the world for PVT. And that's using that, absorbing that waste heat and using it as a thermal energy source to improve the efficiency and the COP of heat pumps. And then your target applications that we are talking to every day, um, food and beverage, Manufacturers um, seems to be a pretty near universal ability to to find solutions that would work either with new build installations or integrating to existing hot water systems. Um, dairy uh, chuck sheds, hydronic underfloor heating, um, but industrial laundries it, it's a bit of a no brainer depending on the system configuration and you know the roof structure and ability to handle some weight. Aquatic centres, we've seen a little bit of that. PVT applied to aquatic centres uh, in Australia really over the last 10 or, or 12 years to varying degrees of success. There were, there were early movers, but generally um, that's not necessarily worked so well, but there's a new wave of PVT coming more reliable and more efficient. Um, wanted to show you just a very simple generic diagram and, and you know, how does the PVT integrate with PVT, well, you can't see it. Effectively, it's totally hidden and, and hidden behind the solar panel. So on a roof, we'll have to put a label on for you to know that it's there. Uh, the, the plumbing, uh, you will see, although hopefully largely hidden under walkways, um, just in quite an efficient um, and elegant way, really, to, to capture design. Looking at the right-hand side of the screen, that's the important part of this slide, really. Um, PVT systems, they're generally running water. You can run glycol, cold appliance, or different you know, um, fluid transfer, um, heat transfer fluids. But um, if we're talking water, most PVT systems run in sequence, five or six panels. And they end up needing quite a large or a high rated pump to, to go from one, pushing the water all the way through to panel five or six. Panel one is hot, but panel five and six are getting much hotter. So Tom's invented a system that's running in parallel, where we take a, a pipe along the full length of an array of solar panels, could be 100 panels, 28 or 29 to match inverter strings. Um, and this has a much, much lower pressure. It's a low pressure system, which really means it's much, uh, you know, much lower maintenance requirements. There's things to go wrong. Uh, and we have a overall energy efficiency mantra here really so so this this is a much more energy efficient side of the pump much smaller um yeah so it's uh, and and the temperature of the across the array is even which the solar panel uh, people like um you know, water sourced heat pumps we think that's going to be a real an interesting driver for our business for pvt in the world water source or hybrid, um, number of things really to say there. The cool sheet system, unless you've got a swimming pool where you're cycling the swimming pool water directly through the cool sheet, it's rated to run salt water or chlorinated water. But generally, uh, I think you get a more effective and faster ROI by twinning with a water source or a hybrid heat pump. The, it's a bit of a virtuous look because if you take the cold side of the heat pump and you're running that through the back of the solar panels, you're really getting a very nice delta T there and harnessing a lot of thermal energy 
in through the panel, and it's effectively you know, working as a preheat to lift the temperature for the inlet temperature to the heat pump. So PVT really works very well as you know for the right temperature, for, you know source temperature as an inlet to heat pumps, and that creates a nice loop where you're really capturing um, you know, a bit of circularity there. Um, yeah, I mean, we strongly recommend a buffer tank just so that you've um, got a stable input into the inlet side of the, the heat pump and it's not searching, being inefficient in its energy use, therefore. Um, yeah, and, and also, because we're storing that at lower temperatures, we're actually capturing a lot more thermal energy at a lower temperature. And then when you step it up um, to the heat pump for the, you know, up to what you'd be telling us, you know, above 200 degrees now uh, is, is possible. Um, but we're becoming big fans of water source heat pumps. Europe, the stories are emerging every month really now, um, that water source, the popularity of water source is really accelerating. It's um, noise is becoming a bit of a, a driver at a residential level, um, but longer life, it's well suited to PV systems, smaller footprint footprint more, more efficient. Um, yeah, so just a quick checklist. This is probably a checklist to, to, to look back on or to screenshot of um, for the challenges uh, of what, what we have to look for when um, uh, integrating PVT with a heat pump system. I mean, it, it's an obvious thing to say, but we should just say it the, uh, at the commercial industrial level um, yeah, every system is unique. You've got to start with the load requirements and the plant requirements. Um, but uh, all of these parameters are effectively going into good modeling exercise um, to, to be dictating optimized sizing of equipment for tanks, buffer tanks, um, varying different controllers. You can, you can have an incredibly cheap controller if you're lucky for a site, it might be 600 to 1,000 bucks. Depends on the complexity of your heat pumps and then your, you know, the, the complex systems, control systems you know, can be tens of thousands of dollars, of course. So um, some of these things obvious, but hopefully a useful checklist. Happy to come back and cover some of those in any Q&A. Um, the modeling obviously critical um, uh, when, when it's uh, new, if not brand new, certainly new to the market then that, that's case studies and, and modeling critical for um, engineers and uh, consultants and clients. We've had a number of years now, but four years of experience of developing um, good models. UNSW were uh, excellent in helping us in the early days, creating a plugin for the call sheet that then you know, goes into the transis um, modeling software. Uh, one of your new members, Jared ATWP, uh, been working with us for a couple of years, actually. Uh, real heat pump experts on the modeling side and uh, shout out to their team. Um, real deep dive um, in understanding all the granularity required on, um, uh, yeah, making sure you're capturing everything. The, the energy usage in all the pumps at all levels, the losses in the pipes, all that obvious modeling stuff, but it's, it, it, the granularity is giving a lot of confidence. So um, using transits is really the best way to model PVT ROI. And then we've got about a minute to go. Just wanted to highlight um, the key returns on investment from PVT system. For sure, it's the, you know, the, the, the subsidy regime that's providing the quickest and uh, largest contribution to ROI. Um, so in addition to the PV getting its STCs or LGCs, you can be attracting um, the subsidy for thermal um, for the, uh, the any offsetting. Uh, needs to be done at the moment through for, for our products through the MMB process, larger commercial industrial. We'll get to the um, standardized kits and STCs, et cetera, in, in a year or two. But significant, um, if you're getting off gas and we can help you do that, Sometimes you just need to carry the cost of the um, the system for a year or so, and, you, and you've got your money back. So excellent, you know, very very quick payback if you're able to access MB. Um, the COP, I'll just run for a few seconds more. Um, improving and lifting the COP is what this slide showing you here. 
Um, and that, that'll be of interest to people on this webinar. So just obviously a small improvement in, the, in, um, uh, in that inlet temperature to the heat pump, significantly reducing the energy required to hit the set point. The other points there are, are, are obvious ones. And there's some that we can't monetize really yet. Um, interesting facts you know, from, from last year's studies that if you cool your solar panel by five degrees across its life, you, you, you extend, extend its life by 50%. You have another 12 years or so out of your solar panel. Can't quite monetize that yet, but it's an interesting one. Um, yeah, look, I, th I think this is reported where you can find it. Um, but that's what we're finding in modeling versus gas. You're saving uh, between 60 to 80% on your annual operating costs if you're moving off gas to a PVT and, and heat pump solution. And versus air source, just that energy, the more efficient water source pumps are um, saving 40 to 50% in energy costs, operating costs. Happy to talk. More about that another time. Um, yeah, so to wind up, we're, we're an interesting commercial pilot. Um, I think the point to make here is that this, uh, depending, you know, if there's any final design changes on this project, uh, we're hoping this is going to be a CO2 neutral project. So the by cooling the modules, we've generated enough energy to offset all the energy being used to run the cool sheet system. So that's pretty neat from an ESG driver perspective as well as obviously saving significant amounts of money over $100,000 a year. Um, so that's the introduction to Cool Sheet. Thank you for your time. Um, some details on screen there for myself, for Tom. Uh, some links on there if that flows through in, in, the, uh, in the recording. And if anybody's interested in thinking we might be able to help you with um, uh, any low carbon product aspects of your net zero, New South Wales grant applications or ITS for Arena, we'd be love we'd love to talk to you. Uh, thanks for that, Doug. And uh, I reflect on if you go back ten or fifteen years, there was a lot of installation of solar thermal, and a lot of people put that on the roof, and then solar PV got cheaper, and it's almost like, well, I've got solar PV, I can use that for multiple different things, and, and I'm getting better value out of that. Uh, and, but it looks like you know, if, you, if I've got this limitation on my roof, I can only so I've only got 400 square metres and I want to get the most out of it I can. It looks like you're giving them a real option to... to yes, yeah, correct. To Sorry, we forget that, don't we, when you're in it. It's a twofer. It's a classic twofer. If you're short on space, one yeah. of the main drivers for Tom, the, the founder, was exactly that. He was fed up paying a crazy gas bill to heat a swimming pool and uh, he said there must be some heat in those panels and that was five years ago and here we are now. And we definitely see that in swimming pools, a little bit of uh, modelling there, that they often cannot get enough solar PV uh, on their roof, uh, such that you think, well, okay, well, how do we get more out of this? Okay, well, there's that 200% uh, boost there as well.